Welcome to another episode of Nerdy Nubbies. Today we are going to be making something that I got so many requests for. I got requests to make a Maleficent themed treat and it's been a while. The first Maleficent themed treat we made was a caramel apple with Rice Krispies. It was so delicious and it looked like the ones that you found in Disneyland. I'll put a link down below if you missed that episode. But today, specifically, I got requests to make a Maleficent themed cake, but not just any cake, a Maleficent princess doll cake like the ones that we've been doing this year so for this cake we're gonna be using the yellow cake recipe from my new cookbook baking all year round and it's right here here's the recipe but if you want something else other than yellow cake you can use whatever recipe you'd like and in front of me I have a bunch of ingredients to make our cake I'll be putting all of the ingredients and their measurements down below in the description so if you want to follow along with me you can and I've got a Maleficent doll. Now you can use any doll that you have around the house that looks like similar to Maleficent or not if you wanna be artsy, but I ordered, I had to wait till it came in the mail to make this cake. I ordered the Maleficent doll and she is gorge. Look at those eyes, I feel like they're staring into my soul. Hauntingly spooky, but also I kind of love it. It says, beloved Aurora, and then she's just like dark queen. She's just like putting her hands up like, yes! Also, if you love baking videos, give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video because I am baking yummy things for every season to celebrate. Okay, now uh, let's get started. First step, we're gonna mix together our cake flour, baking powder, and salt. Then whisk together until well combined. And I know what you're thinking, this is a lot of cake flour. This is the princess cake pan from the row baking line. So technically today, look, we're making three cakes. So that's why the recipe is so big. Just wanted to show you, there's a lot of cake that we're making. Once mixed, set it off to the side. And in an electric stand mixer, we're gonna mix together our eggs, sugar, vanilla extract, and lemon extract. Yum, 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 yum. Then mix together for about two to three minutes minutes until it's about doubled in volume. You want it to get a little fluffier. Whoa! Okay, I'm actually not mad at that speed. Look how fluffy this is. This is looking good. And now I'm gonna let that sit and I'm gonna combine all of the dairy things. I'm gonna pour the buttermilk and milk into the melted butter. Oh my gosh, that is just fits. Mix together and set this one off to the side. And bring in the flour. Next up, add all of the dry ingredients into the egg mixture and mix together till well combined. Once combined, then we're gonna add our very <laughs> buttery mixture. Oh, <laughs> Okay, our cake batter is all mixed up and ready to pour into these three pans. Now I'm just gonna eyeball it and I'm gonna try to fill each pan about two thirds full. Woo, oh, that's a nice thick batter. Oh, it smells so good, that slight lemon. Molly. Molly's here, she's over here. Bare hand in. There she is! <laughs> She's helping me bake today, but she's not on camera today because we stayed up really late with Grayson. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so happy. Oh my gosh. Molly, do you believe in me? You can do it. We can do it, okay, we're doing it, eyeballing. Look at that arm workout. Boom, that's two thirds. Boom, now remember when you're pouring in the batter, don't pour into the center hole. <laughs> Right it goes right through. There's nothing there. So just avoid the center hole and don't worry about getting a little batter on the cake pan. You could just wipe it off. I'm a really messy baker, so don't worry about it. All the batter is in the pans and these cakes are ready to bake. You're gonna heat your oven to 350 degrees and bake for about 35 to 40 minutes. And the great thing about these pans is you can put them all in at the same time. Just toss them all in and they bake evenly, even though they're different different sizes. Boom, science, I came up with that. 
Once your cakes have baked, give them plenty of time to cool. Then I've leveled them off, which is just cutting off the top so that they're nice and flat. And over here, we're gonna stack them and ice them. Now is a good time to pick whatever you wanna serve your cake on, whether it's a cake plate like I've got, or a regular plate, or a cake stand, whatever you're fancy, whatever you wanna use. And I'm also gonna be setting it on top of a turntable just to make icing a little bit easier. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. But I just love it because it's so smooth and it makes it look profesh. But wait a minute, actually we are covering the cake in fondant, so if your icing doesn't look perfect, it doesn't matter, nobody's gonna know. You're gonna take the largest cake, this one goes on the bottom, level side down, boom, just like that. And then we're gonna take a bunch of vanilla buttercream icing, which I've dyed green, and ice on top and start stacking. We're gonna go cake, icing, cake, icing cake. And I picked green because green is the color of Maleficent's magic. So I thought that was pretty cool. The magic's inside of her. And this one's in her dress. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, I like to put a thick layer of icing in between here because then each slice looks really pretty when you cut into the cake. Get that bright green layer in between. Pick up the second cake. We're gonna put it level side down because it slightly creates a slant. Another layer of icing. I like to pipe an outside Side layer and around the circle and then fill it in. Now for the last and final layer of the cake, the dome goes on the top and you just wanna align the hole so they go all the way down. As you guys have seen, every cake is baked with a hole in the middle, kind of like a bunt cake. I designed the hole in the cake to be large enough to fit any standard size doll's hips in so that the cake wouldn't break. And if the hips are a little larger, because they do vary in size, this is a great recipe because it has a lot of moisture. So your cake doesn't crack when you're placing in the doll, it's amazing. All right, now that our cake is stacked, we're gonna ice it. I'm just gonna cover the entire cake with some more buttercream icing. And remember, it doesn't have to look perfect because we're gonna cover it with fondant. For icing, I like to start at the bottom of the cake and just spin it around and work my way up. This feels so artsy. It feels like I'm in a pottery class. Once you've got all the icing on the cake, it kinda looks like a green beehive. Take an offset spatula, or just apply gentle pressure on the outside of the cake and keep spinning it around until it gets really smooth. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time doing this though because we're gonna cover it with fondant. Ooh, look at this. The cake is stacked and iced. Now we're gonna cover it with a piece of fondant. Over here I've rolled out a black piece of fondant and underneath I have a little bit of parchment paper and I used a fondant rolling pin. It's really large and it's great for big pieces like this. And what I like to do to transfer it is you just start to roll it up on one end. Doo -ba -doo. Pick it up and flop it over. Here we go. Just kind of eyeball it. Yes! Oh my gosh, it worked! Look at this! Once the piece of fondant is on, you're gonna gently, very gently pull down to cover the cake entirely. And this is gonna look like Maleficent's dress. We've got the fondant on the cake. It's looking good. Looks like a beautiful dress. This part is totally optional, but I wanna add a second layer. I love that look. So I've rolled out another piece of fondant over here, but this one is a little bit smaller so that it will be like a layered dress look. Fun tip to get fondant to stick to fun that you can just use a little bit of water. So I've got a little paintbrush, a little bowl of water right here. I'm just gonna dip the paintbrush in, just paint a little bit on top of the cake. It's gonna help it stick together, stay in place. Up and over, there we go. Then just like before, we're gonna gently press down and shape our dress. Cake is covered in fondant, now we're gonna start building Maleficent, a dress to match. Now I took off her gown and she's got this really cool like low back, looks like a bikini or like a corset and I just realized, look, I didn't plan this, I didn't even know it was there, look at that. Both low back, we're twinsies or whatever. This part's optional you can just stick her bloop right in the cake because that looks like a beautiful dress. Look at that. We're gonna be fancy today. I'm gonna make her a matching fondant top. In front of me, I've cut out a bunch of different pieces out of black fondant, and this is the beginning of her V-neck dress. And I know it looks a little funny. Basically, just roll out and cut out a rectangle, and then cut out a V-neck for her front, and two dips for her armholes. Whee! 
Whenever we do these, it reminds me of dress patterns. So if you've ever sewn before, you played with a sewing machine and sewed your own costume, this is kind of what they look like. Molly, do you remember for Halloween when you made your own kangaroo outfit from scratch? Heck yeah. She sewed her own Halloween costume one year. And she got second place in my school contest. Second place in her school Halloween contest. Do you remember who got first? No. Uh, we don't talk about it. We don't talk now to get the fondant to stick to the doll, if it's warm, it should stick very easily. Fondant is really interesting because the more you work it with your hands and it heats up, it's softer and more pliable. And then as it sits out, it kind of hardens. So I'm gonna use a little bit of water, paintbrush again, like we did before on the cake. And then we're just gonna place it onto the doll. And then just keep playing with it. Okay, there she goes. She's got a nice V-neck. Now I'm gonna take a small sharp cutting knife and just make some little details. Pressing the knife gently into the fondant, not very hard, I'm just creating a line, but you can do this with a toothpick or a fondant roller, whatever you have in your kitchen. Give it some cool texture. Just making lines down one side and then lines down the other. Okay, now I'm gonna stick her into the cake. Just gonna cut an X. And in she goes. Okay, now that we've got the doll in the cake, the next detail that I'm gonna put is on top of the dress and there are all these little pieces, they're kind of squiggly. When all these little squiggly pieces are lined up together, they look like a pixie skirt. So we are gonna give her some fairy vibes. This part, again, is totally optional. I just think it was perfect. Put some water on the back, place the flat end at the top and let it drape down. And don't worry about them connecting perfectly because we're gonna make a belt to tie it all together. I love this. You can also layer them. Like you can stick this one right here. Ooh, just like that. So I'm gonna do this all the way around and then I'm gonna also put on her sleeves. And her sleeves, if you have never made a dress pattern before, look at them, they kind of look like bat ears, but they're basically triangles with big scoops on the sides and instead of a pointy end, it's a little flat end. And that little flat end is going to attach right here. I'm just gonna wet again a little bit here to attach the fondant easily. And then we're gonna wrap this piece all the way around. For the belt, I've cut a thin strip, a little rectangle, and you're just gonna wrap it all the way around and then cut off the excess in the back. Gently press it against the doll and the bottom cake. This is gonna make everything come together. The dress is almost done. The final detail that I'm gonna add are these and not poof sleeves. That would be a little bit easier, but for her, she has these like little ding decorations. I don't know what they are. They're like feather flaps, wings. I don't, they're, you know, these. This little detail is so iconic to her look. So I'm just gonna take a little piece of fondant. It's so small, I've rolled it just with my fingers. I'm placing it on top of her shoulder, kind of like a baby shoulder pad. Give her some height, then the paintbrush, drop of water to help the fondant stick. I've cut out two triangles, one smaller than the other, and you're gonna place the smaller one down first, right into the fondant gonna kind of act as a base, a glue. I'm gonna add a little bit more water onto the larger triangle and place it on top. And ta-da, there you have it. Here is the Maleficent themed princess cake that we made today. A big thank you to you guys for suggesting a Maleficent themed treat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be taking pictures of this cake and posting it all over social media with the recipe. If you make this cake, please tag me because I love seeing your baking creations. It just makes me happy, it makes my day. Or if you make any other Maleficent themed treats or any treats with the princess band because there are so many Disney princesses and villains that you can make you using this pan. I absolutely love it. It's super versatile. I had so much fun making this. If you guys like baking videos, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. All right, thanks again, bye-bye.